We're going to take a look at two examples of therapeutic stem cell uses. So the basic concept is the same here. Something's wrong with the body because of a genetic mutation or some other kind of issue where you have non-functioning cells, cells that aren't able to do their job because of some kind of mutation. And what we try to do is basically put in healthy cells. So where do we get those healthy cells? Um, the idea is basically that we're able to produce these healthy cells because we already know what stem cells are. We've talked about stem cells. Stem cells are undifferentiated. They have the ability to turn into any kind of cell. What scientists need to figure out is how to trick those stem cells to actually turn in to the specific types of cells that we want them to be, right? Because when I was a baby, or before that, when I was a zygote, that came about from the fusion of a sperm cell and an egg cell, those things combined together to form the very first cell that was me. And all my trillions of cells, last article I read said 370 trillion cells that make up my body, and that doesn't include the bacteria that's all over me. I'm not exceptionally dirty. We all have lots of bacteria. But anyways, the 370 trillion or so cells that make up my body all came from that original one cell. So all the instructions are there, and you can review that. You can review the importance of stem cells. So we're going to talk about two diseases that can be treated or have been treated and using stem cells, and then we can look at some other future possibilities as well. So this first disease is something called Stargardt's macular dystrophy, which is a fancy name for a particular genetic mutation that actually leads to non-functioning retinal cells. So it's a recessive mutation. So this is actually something that's inherited. It's an inherited disease as opposed to a disease that's contracted or caused by some kind of pathogen. So it causes malfunction of a membrane protein in retinal cells. So what that means is some of these cells in the retina, which are the back of your eyeball have certain proteins in there that are supposed to uh, transfer in particular chemicals and you can we don't have to get into all the details there but basically because of this recessive mutation that protein does not get formed properly as a result of probably one or more amino acids that actually ends up changing. And as a result, the protein doesn't have the correct three-dimensional structure that it's supposed to have. And therefore, it's like a lock that was made by a, um, I don't know, somebody who makes locks, who molds the metal, but there's something wrong with their actual mold. And so all the locks come out wrong with the incorrect shape. And so the key doesn't fit anymore. So that's basically what's happening here. So what do we need to do? We need to actually make the retinal cells that actually have the properly functioning protein in the retina. And so we can basically use embryonic stem cells. We trick these embryonic stem cells to turn into retina cells using a specific concoction of temperatures and chemicals and treatments. And then basically from there, it's quite simple. You're just injecting those cells into the eye and hoping that the ones that you've injected that have the correct protein will actually do the job that the retina cells that have the broken protein aren't able to do. So that's the idea. You're just trying to replace uh, broken cells with fixed cells. Or even if you can't replace, if you can't remove the broken cells, your hope is that the ones, the cells that actually do work can kind of take over for the lack of the job that the broken cells aren't able to do. The other disease that we can talk about that's been treated effectively with stem cells is leukemia. And you've probably heard about this one a little bit more. It's basically cancer of the blood, which results in unusually high white blood cell counts. So here we've got over 30,000 white blood cells per cubic millimeter of blood. The treatment for this is a little bit less controversial. So when we talked about Stargardt's macular dystrophy, we talked about using embryonic stem cells. And you have probably had a debate in your class and talked about the difference between using embryonic stem cells versus adult stem cells. And there's a lot more controversial issues that arise from using embryonic stem cells. But in this case, we can actually use adult stem cells. The limit here is that these adult stem cells 
are limited in a sense that they can only turn into blood cells, but there's many different types of blood cells. So if you have an unlimited supply of cells that can turn into blood cells, if that's what we want, that's okay. We don't have to, we're not trying to turn them back into nerve cells or turn them back into retinal cells or skin cells. If they're destined to become blood cells and that's what we want, then we can just use that as the source. So using adult stem cells is a way to treat uh, leukemia. So basically what you do is you try to remove the diseased cells. So basically one of the benefits from this is that the source of the stem cells can actually come from the person who actually has the disease, which is better for all kinds of uh, reasons, including that these stem cells will not be rejected by the part this particular person's body. And so what we can do is you basically try to remove some of these stem cells, and since they are formed in the bone marrow, you try to remove some of that fluid. You then extract the stem cells that you need, uh, purify them, make sure they're okay, and then you go back and you try to destroy all the cancer cells using chemotherapy. So using specific drugs that are targeted to kill these cells that are dividing uncontrollably. And so if you theoretically go and destroy and kill all the disease cells, and you've already taken out some cells that you've extracted as stem cells, then you can put the stem cells back in and then regenerate the entire blood supply and hope that there's no uh, damaged white blood cells in there that are actually dividing uncontrollably. So that's the basic idea of using stem cells for therapeutic uses. So when you talk about um, stem cell use, you often hear about cloning, and the cloning is what gets people all weirded out and ethical things come up. And so you need to separate cloning into therapeutic cloning and reproductive cloning. Reproductive cloning is the idea you know, that was presented in Jurassic Park or the idea of Star Wars clones by making individual organisms repeat copies, clones of whole organisms, making a brand new me, which I don't think would be such a bad idea. Uh, so we could play, you know, two-player games like chess and things like that. I'm often looking for a partner to play things like that with me. But anyways, uh, can't do that because it's illegal and there's all kinds of issues and I'm going to feel guilty about it as well too. The other type of cloning besides reproductive cloning is therapeutic cloning and that's what we've been talking about here, using stem cells for therapies, for the treatments of certain types of genetic diseases. And so that's where a lot of the potential lies. Now notice, just one last thing, for these two particular treatments, what we're doing is we're using stem cells to produce new healthy cells. We're not even going in to address the issue of the mutation. So that's a whole nother uh, realm of potential treatments for genetic diseases. We're not actually going in to fix the mutation. What we're doing is we're putting in cells that don't have the mutation and hoping that these cells can overcome the problems that have arisen from the previous cells that were there that had the actual mutation. So we're not actually doing any genetic engineering in terms of going in and snipping DNA and removing or replacing uh, missing alleles or the wrong alleles. So make sure you can distinguish between these two types of treatments for diseases. Okay, thanks a lot. And uh, don't get Stargardt's macular dystrophy. And you won't. If you had it, you'd know already. You would have inherited it. All right.